I, 28 female, recently found out I have a serious hereditary illness that's going to screw up my life and I'm so angry I can barely type this out. It's a degenerative illness with no cure. Nothing. My body's just going to slowly get worse. And the kicker? My parents knew this could happen my whole life, but they never said a word. This illness runs in my family. My dad's mom had it. His sister, my aunt, died from it a few years ago. I was living overseas when she passed and my parents told me it was cancer. Cancer? They lied right to my face. It wasn't until I got diagnosed that they finally came clean and admitted she had the same illness I do. When I confronted him, my dad wouldn't even give me a straight answer. I asked if he had it too and he dodged every question, acting like I was overreacting. On the other hand, my mom tried to justify it by saying they didn't want me living in fear. Are you kidding me? I could have been prepared. Instead, they chose to let me walk into this blind. And here's where it gets worse. I have a two-year-old son. My child might have this and they never told me I was at risk. I could have had him tested, made informed decisions, anything. But no, they took that from me and now I live in constant fear for him too. Then my mom had the nerve to ask me if I would rather not be born than deal with this. Can you believe that? She turned it around on me like I was the monster for even thinking it. And you know what? Yes, I said it. Yes, I would rather not have been born than deal with this disease. They made a selfish choice and now I'm paying for it. They knew the risks and did it anyway, for themselves. They wanted kids and now I'm stuck with this. I called them selfish and I meant every word. Now they're begging me not to tell my younger siblings. They don't know about this yet, haven't been tested, and my parents want to keep it that way. They're hoping they'll get lucky, but I won't lie to them. I refuse to let them be blindsided like I was. They deserve to know the truth. I've gone low contact with my parents. I can't even think about them right now. My mom kept trying to guilt trip me, saying they were just trying to protect me. Protect me from what? The truth? No, they weren't protecting me. They were protecting themselves from the guilt of knowing they passed this on, and now they want me to protect them too. But I won't. I love my son and my siblings too much to lie to them. Am I the idiot for going low contact and refusing to keep their secret, even though they claim they were just trying to protect me? Oh, I wish I could give you a hug right now. My sister-in-law's best friend died from Huntington's disease. She always knew it was a possibility. She tested positive and opted not to have children. Her sibling, who tested positive, has made the same choice. They understood the risks and they made their choices. Your parents' decision to hide this from you is beyond selfish. You have a right to know. Your siblings do need to know. You all have the right to make informed decisions. Trying to turn it on you and make you feel bad for being angry just takes them further over the line. My ex-wife's family, mom's side, has Huntington's dominant gene genetic disorder, so 50-50 if a parent has it that the child gets it. It was the big family secret. None of the four kids knew about it. Her grandfather died of it. But this was passed off as he was intoxicated and had an accident. My ex always had questions, and when her mom started with early signs about age 40, she began to do research. Finally, she was able to get the story in bits and bits. The siblings all sort of denied it, and the grandma never admitted it. My ex was tested and didn't have it. That was a lot of work on our part to keep it off insurance records. She told all of her siblings, two of which already had kids. None of them ever were tested. They just decided to let nature take its course. Two of the five have Huntington's and one has died of it. She tried to tell her mom's other siblings, but they were resistant to hearing it. The old family secrets, not your business. Ex's mom died of the disease after we were divorced. Two of her siblings died of it. Unknown how many of the kids may have it. Damn family secrets. When secrets literally kill. Good grief. I would be so furious if I was OP. It's hard to imagine how anyone could be this freaking reckless with the lives of their kids and grandkids. Adoption exists. And as others have pointed out, IVF with genetic screening exists. It didn't exist 29 years ago, but they could have waited or just decided not to roll the dice with their children's lives. Am I the idiot for calling my parents selfish for having me? Most of you figured it out anyway. It is Huntington's, I told my siblings. We met at my sister's house and I just came out with it. I told them what I had and said that it was hereditary. My sister thanked me for telling her. Told me she would get tested but seemed distant. I get it, it is very heavy. So I've been giving her space but made it clear that I'm there for her. 
My brother looked horrified. He and his fiance had just started trying for a baby and the fear in his eyes was immediate. His fiance, who works as a senior nurse in palliative care, didn't take it lightly either. She deals with degenerative diseases every day and had a family member die from one, so this news hit her hard. She immediately took control of the situation. She has a lot of connections in the medical field because of her work, and she's been pulling some strings to get my brother's test done as fast as possible. She's also been making sure I get the care I need, reaching out to specialists she knows personally. She's moving things around and calling favors to ensure I'm seen quickly. On top of that, she's been adamant that I need to see a counselor, pushing me to get emotional support. Given her experience, she knows how hard this will be, and I'm grateful she's making it happen because I wouldn't know where to begin. My husband and I have also been having difficult conversations about the future. We've decided to make my will and I've been clear with him about when I won't want to continue living if things get too bad. I've also started recording videos for my son. I watched P.S. I Love You years ago and the idea of leaving something behind for my husband and son feels like a way to hold on to a part of me. We plan to speak to a child psychologist soon to figure out the best way to prepare our son for what's coming, though we haven't started yet, and also to weigh our options about him and the possibility of him getting this illness from me. We're not going to make an uninformed decision. On Saturday, our parents invited all of us over to their house saying they wanted to talk. My sister came too, but she didn't stay long. As soon as my parents started explaining how they kept the illness hidden to protect us, she couldn't take it. She stood up and said she couldn't handle it and left. She's been distant since and it feels like I've lost her a little. I know she's terrified, but it still hurts to see her pulling away. After my sister left, everything exploded. My parents turned on me, blaming me for ruining the family and accusing me of causing all this chaos by telling the truth. They kept saying they did it to protect us, but I just couldn't respond anymore. That's when my brother's fiance stepped in. She completely laid into them, telling them they had no right to keep something this serious from us. She told them they hadn't protected us, they had betrayed us, and I was so relieved she stepped in because I didn't have the energy to argue anymore. Then my dad snapped. He started shouting at her, telling her to stay out of it, and he shoved me. I couldn't even react, I was so shocked. My husband immediately stepped between us, grabbed my dad's arm, and told him he better never touch me again. My dad just kept shouting, saying I was the one who was tearing the family apart and blowing everything out of proportion. That was it. We left. My brother and his fiance walked out with us, and since then none of us have spoken to my parents. They've been calling, but I don't want to hear their excuses. They still insist they did everything to protect us, but it feels like they were just protecting themselves from guilt. I don't have the energy for their manipulations anymore. Right now, my brother and I are focused on getting him tested. His fiance is doing everything she can to keep things moving forward. She's been an incredible support, and we rely on her to help us navigate what's next. I'm focusing on my son and my husband and preparing for the future. There's too much at stake to keep fighting about a secret that should never have been kept in the first place. All the best to you, OP. Fingers crossed for your son and siblings. Denial is a powerful thing. Avoidance is an easy route to take with news like this. I don't have much sympathy for the parents. Your parents' line does not make sense at all. A hereditary disease might just pop up and ruin lives. Actually, it does make sense. For them, not telling them was protecting them because they didn't have to fear the disease. They went to college, enjoyed their lives without worry, got married, had kids. It might have been hidden from them for a long time, and since they got to get married and have kids without any issues, they thought it would be the same for their kids. They didn't want them to live in fear and they also wanted to have grandkids. If one of them had gotten sick, they would have had another way of thinking about the disease. Disagree, the nurse fiancé is right. It's not protection, it's a betrayal. If OP had the facts, they could have made choices. If OP's parents had used a single brain cell or put themselves in their children's shoes, they'd realize it was never protection. The fact that the father shoved her makes me think they really don't care about protection at all. It was about avoiding accountability. I am just retired and I was a wedding planner. My son and my future daughter-in-law asked me if I would plan their wedding since I have the experience. I did plan my daughter's wedding. I told them no and when asked why, I told both of them that it was due to my future daughter-in-law's lateness habit. She claims it's a cultural difference and everyone in her family is late. This is true, they're always 30 minutes or more late, and it drives me insane. I know she would be the person I would meet up with often for this. 
The wedding would need many meetups and I'm not willing to sit around waiting for her or my son. Not to mention all the business appointments I do not want to be embarrassed at when she's late. I've talked to her about the lateness before and nothing has changed. She was literally late for my birthday dinner about a month ago. I've also talked to my son and he sides with her. I'm not willing to tell her an earlier time since she's an adult and overall, her lateness is disrespectful to me and my time. I explained the reasoning above and they were angry. My son was upset since I wouldn't give her a chance and I did plan his sister's. My daughter-in-law is angry since I told her she's the reason I won't. She's proven repeatedly that she won't be on time and I don't even want to try with this. Am I the idiot? Not the idiot. Cultural difference is my behind. That behavior can be changed if she wants to. She just doesn't respect you enough to bother. I have a friend who's always late and she blames her ADHD. Maybe that explains it, but it doesn't excuse it. If you know you have limitations, whether due to your culture or because you're not neurotypical, you figure out ways to work around it if it is indeed important to you. I bet she can be on time for a doctor's appointment, for example, right? She gets to work on time, right? She is an adult and is disrespecting you. You do not owe her further opportunities to do so. They can hire a wedding planner who may or may not put up with that lateness. You could say no for any reason, actually. It's their wedding. They asked you a favor, and you declined. You are the idiot, and there will be long-term consequences for your flat refusal to help them. They will interpret this as either you do not like the daughter-in-law or playing favorites among your children. If it's important to you to start this relationship on a good footing, you might find some room to compromise. Maybe providing lists of vendors and locations that you loved, tips on negotiations, references on other planners, looking over contracts, etc. I'd also gently suggest that you start looking for your daughter-in-law's good qualities because you didn't mention anything positive. I have friends and family who are habitually tardy, but they usually have some amazing quality that makes up for it. Remember the fact that she loves your son and puts up with his imperfections. My brother lost his first wife when their daughter Thea, 19 female, was six. Before the death of his first wife, they also had a stillborn daughter together. This was two years before my brother's late wife passed away, so they went through a lot and my brother struggled with both losses happening so fast. But Thea was really close to her mom and had a hard time with not having her around. When my brother met his current wife, Denise, Thea was seven. They got married when Thea was nine. I, along with my parents, had mentioned to my brother that Thea didn't look happy with the upcoming wedding and his relationship with Denise. She wasn't being mean or acting out, but we could see she kept an emotional distance from Denise and her smiles looked forced. Of course, she had lost her mom, so it made sense, but we figured my brother should know and could probably help her. However, he said she wasn't saying anything and therefore was fine. Every photo Thea was in at the wedding, she had a very fake smile and there was no joy or happiness in it. She was going through the motions. It was the same when her first half-sibling was born a few months later. She never held her. She didn't have a happy smile in any photos with them, and she was not an adoring big sister like others described her as. In any photos with her half-siblings and Denise, she looked downright uncomfortable, and the smile is so strained. My parents and I had mentioned this to my brother a couple of times each after he remarried, but again, because Thea said nothing, it was considered fine. He only took it seriously when a relative visited two-ish years ago. He saw some photos from my brother's second wedding, and mentioned how clear it was Thea was faking her smile. My brother was sort of like, what the heck? This relative would not know Thea well, but still picked up on it. Denise told me that same day that Thea never let her in, and she didn't think Thea cared much for her and the kids. Now that Thea's a college student, she's living on her own, and she's put some distance between herself and them. My brother wanted her to come for a 10th wedding anniversary family dinner, and she told him she had no interest in celebrating his second wedding, which shocked him. She also told him she was spending Christmas with her friends this year. But then he learned she was planning to stop by to see our parents for at least one day. He confided in me about this, how upset he was that she has these feelings, and how shocked he was. He also said Denise told him she doesn't believe Thea loves her or the kids at all. And this might make me the idiot, but I brought up the fact our parents and I had told him a few times already, and he brushed us off. He told me I was great at being supportive and thanks for nothing. There's been a chill between us since then. Am I the idiot? Everyone's the idiot here. Well, apart from Thea, you have admitted in 13 years you had one attempted conversation with Thea and then you didn't really try again. Her father, despite being told Thea didn't look happy, 
brushed those concerns off. No one really advocated for Thea, and no one said I needed to make sure she was happy. If she can't speak to her father or stepmom, then we will ensure she has someone she can speak to. You barely scratched the surface and said, Well, I tried. Two years ago, someone who doesn't really know Thea pointed out how unhappy she looked in all the pics, and it's like a come-to-Jesus moment and Denise pipes up. She doesn't think Thea likes her or her siblings. God, you all buried your head in the sand and ignored a child in distress. You don't get to call your bro out now for ignoring it when you did the bare minimum. Yep, Opie did so little that it practically redefines the phrase bare minimum, which, okay, judging myself by the same standard, I get that families are complicated. There have been times I could have done more for my brother's kids, but for various reasons, I've chosen not to get too involved. But keeping my distance and then criticizing my brother for his parenting? No, that's just not right. It's just a shame Thea didn't have grandparents, aunts or uncles who could have talked with her, spent time with her, found out how she felt and helped her navigate her feelings with all the changes.